Fora TV. The world is thinking. Well, then the next day, the majority leader said to me, he said, you're in luck. He said, we don't have filibusters too often, but we're having one tonight. <laughs> and you can come over and see how things work around here. After I was there, I found out it's how they don't work, but uh, that's the way it was described. So at 6 o'clock that evening, I went over to the Senate, took my seat in the chamber way back in the corner, number 100, and I uh, looked around, and to my astonishment, I was the only senator <laughs> in the entire chamber. And I thought, this is an odd way to do business. And then after a while, one senator came in, and he got up and he said, I want to say a few words. And he spoke for six hours. <laughs> Since I was the only other person in the chamber, he spoke to me for six hours. <laughs> About halfway through, I began to think, I'm really not learning anything here. <laughs> but I swear, I didn't move a muscle. I didn't even twitch. But he sensed it. He walked over right in front of me, began addressing himself to me pointing his finger in my face as he spoke. The gestures bore no relationship to the words, but I thought, well, it must look good on TV. So I didn't budge, and he talked to me. And then after about six hours, he called for a vote on a procedural matter. I don't know if any of you have ever been in the nation's capital when a vote occurs. You know that loud bells ring, lights flash. That tells the senators and members of the House that a vote's occurring, and they've got so much time to go to the chamber and cast their vote. So the lights flashed, the bells rang, and into the same chamber poured the other 98 senators. They all cast their votes, and then they all left, including the guy who just talked to me for six hours. And <laughs> for a moment, I didn't realize what was going on. I didn't know what to do. Well, before I, could, before I realized it, another guy came in, and he talked to me for six more hours. <laughs> and this went on all night long. And so by the next morning, I was very tired. I was hungry. I went to a clerk standing by the side of the Senate door, by the door by the chamber there, and I said, listen, I said, excuse me, I'm new here. He said, Senator, that's obvious to everyone. <laughs> he said, what do you want? I said, well, I said, I'm out here tending the nation's business, and I'm the only one out here. Where do these other senators go? What do they do? And he said, I'll... I'll do better than tell you, I'll show you. So it took me around right in the back of the speaker's chair there in the Senate, Senate chamber to a room not much bigger than this where there are a whole bunch of narrow canvas folding cots set up of the type you see in emergency shelters. And there, lying there in their clothes, snoring away, <laughs> were the members of the U.S. Senate. <laughs> My second disillusioning moment in <laughs> less than a day it was very crowded, and there were no aisles, so he said to me, Senator, there's an empty cot there, you better grab it. I had to climb over other senators to get there, and that made me very nervous. The first senator I had to climb over was Ted Kennedy. <laughs> uh, now, Ted's a great friend, but he's not a slight fellow, as you know. <laughs> and at that moment, he looked to me like Mount Everest. So I had to use all the athletic skill that my brothers insist I don't have. I climbed over him. And before I could heave a sigh of relief on the other side, I looked, and on the next cot lying there, on his back, snoring away, was Senator Jesse Helms of North Carolina. <laughs> now, I'd only been there a day, but I was aware of Senator Helms's reputation as a staunch defender of heterosexual rights. <laughs> so I was really nervous uh, uh, climbing over there, and I said, my God, what if I lose my balance and fall right on top of him here in the nation's capital with 98 unimpeachable witnesses. So I, I did. I got over and, and I realized uh, once I got onto this empty cot and laid there that I had made the biggest mistake of my life. Just a day earlier, I had been a dignified person, a federal judge. I even wore a black robe to convey a sense of dignity. Now here I was lying there with a bunch of old guys just snoring away and I thought, God, what a mistake I've made. And, I wallowed in self-pity, and as I was really at a moment of intense self-pity, I rolled over on this cot, and I looked right next to me, just a few inches away, into the face of Senator John Warner of Virginia. Now, at that time, Senator Warner was married to Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> so I looked at him, and I thought, who am I to feel sorry for myself? <laughs> I thought, 
I thought, here's a guy who could be home in bed with his wife, and he's spending the night with me.